Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and this week we are going to keep working on our tile set for environment concept painting. And really this all just arose as an efficiency for me personally, because I found myself working on games where I'd be doing props that lived in the same world. And because they are built by the same culture, they would have, you know, repeated visual motifs. And so instead of just drawing the same thing over and over and hoping it would stay consistent, I started making a second document that I would keep off to the side as like a little parts bin to keep my repeats that I was going to use over and over. So it might start to look something like this. But let's take a step back. This ultimately is going to have to start with some source material. So I have started with some photos that come from cgtextures.com, which is an awesome free resource. And then I did modify them a bit. I wanted them to feel a little more homogenous, so I used the levels command and the hue saturation command, and I made them match each other. Also notice that they are sort of light in value and have dark details, and that's on purpose. The point here is that I want to be able to set them to the multiply blending mode and have them act as sort of a nice detail overlay on my paintings. But then what we're going for are shapes like this. They're sort of like your building blocks or your Legos that are very flat, but are going to be very versatile. So they're not a finished product necessarily, but they're going to save you a lot of time. But let's look at something like this arch. Clearly, I did not find this arch as a photo. Instead, what I did was I built it out of smaller building blocks. So let's see how I'd approach making one of these from scratch. Although what I have here is actually not scratch, it is a tiling unit. Now I have another video where I talk all about how to make tiling textures, but it is important for this. Because what it allows me to do is to make a duplicate, and these two will make a perfect sort of continuous horizontal band. So I can do that a few more times, and this should start looking pretty familiar, because this is what we did last week. The only difference is that it's a photographic element instead of a more basic, like, hand-drawn one. But the principles are exactly the same. So here I have one side of my doorway. I can flip horizontally to make another one. And now to make the top, it's just like we did last week. So I will put it horizontally, then do free transform, warp, and here I'm going to use the arc preset. And I'll change the bend value to 100%. And now you can see, if I scale the three of these together, I have an arch. So this is a very powerful notion. I start with some high quality sort of incremental pieces. These are my building blocks. And then from those small units, they give me a huge amount of possibility. From them, I'm going to start building a tile set. And then that tile set will allow me to just slap on some high detail overlays onto any number of paintings. So to me, the tile set is sort of like a living document. It's not something that I make once and then I make paintings with it. It'll be something that I sort of keep on the side as I'm developing paintings. So I might add individual pieces to the tile set and it becomes bigger and bigger as I go. Now in the middle of the floor in our example, it has a very detailed circle. And this is something that would have been a nightmare to do if you weren't aware of the warp tool. So let's just see how using these you know, basic building blocks, I could make a really cool circle. So here I have just some tiling pieces. I, again, used some source material, made sure they'd tile, and then just put them next to each other. So let's move that into our new document and give it a try. The way I do this is just like before, only I'm going to do one more value. So I'll do warp. I will use arc. Set it to 100% on the bend. But now there's a problem. We have this void here in the center. And that's really not the ideal result. We want it to be more circular. So instead, I'm actually going to change this, now that I think about it, to a negative 100. Okay. And then I'm going to change this V value. I have no idea what V means, maybe vertical, but whatever it is, it is great. Because now I can close in that void in the center, and then I'll confirm this, and you can see the results are really neat. 
So here we have a very realistic sort of central detail. And I didn't have to paint any circles. I painted flat graphics. I used sort of universal building blocks. All that mattered was that they would tile. And then with a few Photoshop tricks, pretty quickly I come to a really high detail, interesting piece that I can add to my tile set. So you can see here, what I get is sort of a library of motif pieces. The more I mix and match and sort of cross-pollinate these pieces, the more it starts to feel like a culture. So next week, we are going to finish this idea by taking our tile set pieces, and I'm going to show you how you actually use them for your painting. So if you want to get ahead of the game, start making your tile set now, and then next week we'll paint with it. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.